So my personal story with Ritalin was such that you could say I was at like a down period of my life, my focus, my concentration, it was way off. I'm talking I would attempt to read and I had to reread the same thing again and again in order to retain it. Just very unusual stuff and I knew something needed to be fixed. So I went to my GP and I told them about this and my issues with studying and some of the pressure that I had and Ritalin was prescribed. Whether this was a wrong diagnosis, I'm not sure, but it did work and it did exactly what I expected it to do. From the moment you take it, what you'll notice is uh, within about an hour or so, you have generally better concentration, you're able to focus better, your alertness is kind of on, and you can feel it stimulating you to some extent, which is why with prescription medication for ADHD, uh, believe me, what goes up must come down because with Ritalin, what so is the higher the dose you go on, the worse the withdrawals are. And similarly to that, it's like the worst the crash type of feel is because Ritalin doesn't last that long. That's one thing which I disliked about it and why I transitioned to taking Concerta, which is an extended release form. It's because with Ritalin, I mean, we're talking maybe three or four hours of good focus concentration. So my personal dosage when I was on it, I was taking 10 milligrams twice per day. And if you were to ask me how to use it, uh, speak to your GP, of course. I'm never recommending anybody takes this stuff. I'm not promoting it. I'm just talking about my experience and hopefully educating you so you can be safe. With Ritalin, what was so was I would take it and eat about 45 to 60 minutes afterwards, once in the morning, and then once again in the afternoon, I would take 10 milligrams, and then 45 minutes to one hour afterwards, I would have a meal. Is this a must? No, not from my experience, but that's generally how it's talked about. It's talked about in a fashion which you should take it and then have your meal. But the issue with Ritalin, with Concerta, with Adderall, with Vyvanse is that they are horribly appetite suppressing. So hey, at the same time with Ritalin, you can say one of the side effects or benefits or cons, depending on how you see it, is weight loss because I was able to lose weight, but I was happy about that because I was overweight back then. And I noticed that just your appetite being more suppressed, you generally just have more of a desire to focus on work versus focus on food. For me anyway, and I'm very, you can say sensitive to nootropics and prescriptions with Ritalin, I didn't want to eat at all. So I kind of forced myself to eat and then take my Ritalin, which it still worked just as well in my opinion and from my experience. To give you a better idea of what Ritalin feels like, if you can just imagine being focused, being tunnel vision on something and being able to very easily avoid distractions outside of like your most important tasks, um, that's pretty much what it does. And it makes it such that you will no longer fidget. You'll no longer be just your mind kind of wandering. You're in your head just generally a lot less. So the point that you know what you're doing, if you make your agenda of your priorities, you just pretty much get them done. I know it sounds too good to be true, but this really exposed me to the power of nootropics and the power of supplements to think that, wow, there's something I can take to actually make me so much more productive. And what's really neat, and this is something hard to find with the nootropic, not only are you able to like focus on being productive very well, but my social skills have got a lot better just because as I would talk to people, I would firstly have more courage to initiate a conversation. And secondly, I would be more engaged in the conversation and I would feel like any sort of social anxiety, fear of being judged or fear of saying the wrong thing, that was gone. And that's probably just because Ritalin makes you in a good mood as stimulants do. We're talking caffeine, ephedrine, Concerta, Vyvanse, like the barometer of whether or not it's working is almost to the extent to which you're in a better mood. A really commonly asked question is, how does Ritalin differ from Adderall? And in my opinion, sure, the neurochemistry and everything could be different, but it's just a matter of Adderall is more stronger and it lasts for a longer period of time. But as far as everything, when it comes to being more productive, being in a better mood, being able to focus, concentrate, even improve your memory, you can say that that's pretty much done with Adderall, but I don't recommend it. I don't use it. I've never used Adderall. I would never want to touch it just because of some of the experiences that you would read about or hear about. What so is with Adderall, I mean, as I mentioned, what goes up comes down and Adderall is something that I read across this channel people saying like they still have not recovered from Adderall withdrawals like four or five years afterwards. I know that sounds crazy, but when you're taking a stimulant like Adderall, it's so strong, it's gonna make you in such an up state that naturally it's like when you get off Adderall, like your baseline cognitive functions are lower. It's like it makes you dumb in theory. I don't know if that's true, but I would never touch Adderall for that reason. And that's why I think Ritalin makes for a good overall, you can say substitute to Adderall because with Ritalin, it's not that strong. I mean, I really couldn't tell it was working for about a week and then I could definitely tell it was working once I got off of Ritalin. But it's like you can feel it sort of rising, you can feel it when it's at its peak, and then you can feel it coming down and then you have to really time the second dose accurately so you can feel kind of in a good focused, concentrated state all day. And what was so was when I transitioned afterwards to taking Concerta, 
Uh, Concerta was a lot better because Concerta is like the extended release form of Ritalin. So I was on, so I believe it was 27 milligrams of Concerta, which is not a high dose, not a very low dose. And that's what it felt like. It was like Ritalin pretty much the whole day, but the crash and the withdrawals were a lot worse. When I was trying to get off of Concerta for about two weeks, and then maybe it took a bit of time afterwards just to transition back to normal. I mean, two weeks of really not wanting to talk to people, not wanting to go out and do work. And it almost felt like I had to expend like way more energy and way more discipline to do anything productive whatsoever. Whereas with Ritalin looking back, I mean, there was no withdrawals. There was really no side effects. I know that sounds a bit exaggerated, but I mean, there really wasn't anything. So of course you have to be mindful of the fact that with stimulants, if you take them too late in the day, that's obviously going to cause some sort of insomnia or it will prevent you from getting into those deep levels of sleep, which are good for REM, memory consolidation, all that good stuff. Side effects, if any, would be just that it's an appetite suppressant, but I didn't really look at that like a bad thing because I was trying to lose weight anyway. And otherwise, what's most commonly reported for other people is, of course, insomnia, dizziness. Some people feel anxious, but these are people who generally have like bad anxiety in the first place, like a general anxiety disorder you can say but i have found just from communicating with all of you great viewers across this channel is if you feel anxious with it then likely you'll benefit by taking a little bit less and making sure you're hydrating well guys if you're getting value out of this video so far then click subscribe and click like if you haven't already so i'm no longer taking ritalin or i'm no longer taking concerta what was so was after i graduated i didn't really need the stuff anymore and i just found nootropics that can naturally help me to aid focus, aid concentration, and at the same time, weren't harmful to me long-term. So with these stimulants, like what so is, how do you know how much you should take? There's so many factors. They're gonna depend on things like your age. They're gonna depend on your weight. They're gonna depend on your general health and anything you're experiencing. And then just your overall sensitivity to nootropics. Like as I've mentioned before on my channel, one reason why you can say the channel is growing well is because I am very sensitive to nootropics and therefore just things seem to work on me. But there's a boatload of nootropics that do not work on me and those are pretty much nootropics which I'm not making videos on. But Ritalin, this is good stuff. I think looking back of all the different stimulants I tried for ADHD, which were um, Ritalin, Concerta, and Vyvanse, Ritalin was the best one just when you look at the overall benefits versus the side effects. And if you were to ask me how Vyvanse compares to Ritalin, it's kind of like the extended release form, again, like Concerta, but with Vyvanse, I noticed that uh, my focus kind of wasn't as tunnel vision, if that makes sense. I used it for two months and then I just realized this is not for me. It was similar to Concerta and the stuff does work, but I noticed like with Concerta, I would feel energized, stimulated, but also having a good level of focus. Whereas with Vyvanse, it was almost like it was just stimulating, but my focus wasn't as tunnel vision. I was maybe slightly more distractible with Vyvanse and with Vyvanse, you're more like your natural self and Concerta, it's like you have this unreal optimism, which is good, but it's also bad because your judgment is kind of off. With Vyvanse, the crash at the end of the day wasn't as bad as with Concerta, whereas with Concerta, at the end of the day, you're horribly irritable, um, you have this sort of brain fog, and you're very likely to eat very unhealthy foods. That happened to me anyway. For whatever reason, with Ritalin, I lost weight, and with Concerta, I gained weight, and it was all very bad weight. I was just very tempted to eat foods that were unhealthy in terms of just bad carbohydrates or sugary foods. With Vyvanse, like something really bizarre was the day after I took it, I just seemed horribly dehydrated. I knew I had to drink a lot of water while being on Vyvanse, but what was so was at the time, I was relatively lean. For those of you who know me, I really enjoy fitness. I love working out. I love improving my physique. And I was somewhat lean at that time in terms of having a six pack. But the following day after using Vyvanse, it was just like shredded. It was like veins everywhere, just a person that I did not recognize. And I quite honestly remember thinking like, wow, maybe this stuff isn't so strong on the brain, but it's definitely strong on the body. So I want to just avoid it from here. The way I'm gonna end this video is showing you a preview of another video I made on nootropics that helped me double my income. And that stack and that nootropic stack that I used was right after using Ritalin and Concerta and then making the decision to be off meds and just find nootropics that are somewhat in line with my health goals. But if you got value out of this video, click subscribe, click like, and comment below, and let's get into that video. You see, great stuff, both physical and mental benefits. You will just feel sharper throughout the whole day and really no bad side effects you should be concerned about. Maybe like 10% of people report a bit of brain fog or bad mood with it, but it's not too common. Here's a visual of what the powder looks like. I would recommend you don't get like one drop of water in, otherwise you get like these, you know, like these alpha GPC clumps 
which we don't want. Really like this stack is for somebody that wants to be a certified workaholic and doesn't care about some of the downsides that come with that.